Glory to Jesus Christ. So we're reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church, published by Libreria Erectrice Vaticana. This is the second edition, 2016, and this is the 2019 reprint. And uh, it's also published in the, here in this country through the cooperation of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, publication number 7-649. So, and you can get this also online at www.usccb, that's United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, slash site, slash default, slash file, slash flipbook, slash catechism of the Catholic Church. Or you can get it at www.vatican.va, catechism of the Catholic Church, and, you know, English. And then... Um, you can get a PDF drive, a free download ebook of the Catechism of the Catholic Church from Catholic Culture. So let's pray. <clears throat> and then with Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. O Heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth who are everywhere present and filling all things, O treasure of blessings and giver of life. Come dwell within us and cleanse us souls, O gracious Lord, Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us, Holy God, Holy Mighty One. To one have mercy on us, Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Heavenly King, come for the Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, instruct in the hearts of the faithful. Grant that, in the same spirit, we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this is, uh, we're at um, part one, Profession of Faith, chapter two, God Comes to Meet Man. Article three, Sacred Scripture. Roman numeral five, Sacred Scripture in the Life of the Church. Uh, so this numbers 131 through 141. And it's page 37, page 37. Sacred Scripture in the Life of the Church, 131. And such is the force and power of the Word of God that it can serve the Church as her support and vigor and the children of the Church as strength for their faith, food for the soul, and a pure and lasting font of spiritual life. Again, that's De Verbum, the, in this section, the most quoted part of the documents of Vatican II, uh, the Word of God. That's what Dei Verbum means. Dei Verbum 21. Hence, access to sacred scripture ought to be open wide to the Christian faithful. Again, Dei Verbum 22. Which is why they return to uh, the a lectionary inspired by the early church that contained for, let's say for mass, the, uh, on Sundays, you would have an Old Testament reading or an Easter time for the book of Acts, uh, a Psalm portion, uh, a, a portion from an epistle and a gospel. And the epistle reading is continuous. It, it goes on, although I would have if it were up to me, I would have had the entire New Testament. They would have done the entire... You maybe it would have taken five years instead of three years. But I would have done the entire New Testament and a wider uh, taking from the Old Testament. And the Old Testament reading, which is usually the first... Which is the first reading, uh, points to something in the, in the Gospel. Sometimes you really have to think, how does this really connect? How do these two readings really connect? Sometimes it's really obvious. Uh, so, and also with the Office of Readings in the Breviary, uh, you get 
the bulk of you get the, the new the bulk of the New Testament except for the Gospels, and you get um, a large chunk of the Old Testament. And the, the plan of initially, I was told, and at least actually when I was in the seminary, this was the way it was. Uh, it was going to be a two-year cycle. So then they would have had an even greater. They would have had the bulk of the Old Testament. Uh, but uh, that, for some reason, that fell through. And the same thing they would have had, you would have more patristic and uh, conciliar and uh, uh, readings by saints, uh, spiritual readings by saints, in the Office of Readings, but for some reason they just did a one-year one. You can also have, they have, you know, if you do you know, the Office for, let's say, one martyr or something, you can get different readings too. If you had, you know, the, uh, using the santoral cycle rather than the ordinary cycle. The saint, santoral means pertaining to the saint, saints. So, uh, the calendar. This, this, you know, there's the saint calendar, you know, the, like, like saint, we have Saint Maria Goretti today. And July 7th, yeah, no, July 6th, July 6th. Uh, so in that, you could have readings for, for that too, you could they had readings for her if you wanted. And then, then they have the sort of continuing cycle of readings, which is uh, with, with the Book of Amos, I believe. I should remember because I read it, but so, so access to sex security ought to be wide, open wide to Christian faith. So more uh, translations of and uh, publications of Bibles, Catholic Bibles, which are fuller Bibles than the Protestant ones, although there are Protestant Bibles that do have the Deuterocanonicals, which they call the Apocrypha, uh, in them. So... Um, 132, therefore the study of the sacred page, meaning scripture, sacred scripture, should be the very soul of sacred theology. So the, uh, you know, we don't just do sermons at mass, we do homilies based on scripture and, and the, uh, as well as the teachings of the church and the, uh, the seasonal cycle, like, you know, Advent and Christmas time and things like that, and the festivals Again, Christmas, Epiphany, things like that, but uh, on Scripture. And uh, encourage to have Scripture studies, if every parish is encouraged to have a Bible study, uh, uh, at least one, you know, they have Bible sharing things too, and they, if there are publications in which you can, uh, uh, doesn't even really need a leader, you just, you know, you read the thing, you uh, talk about the questions that go with the, the, the commentary, read the commentary on that, that comes with the, the, so the study of the sacred page, but also Lexio Divina, prayerful reading of scripture over and over, a, a small passage, sometimes just one line, repeat it over, over and pray over it, and then, and converse with God about it, and then do that again, and uh, they hit the, uh, uh, and and uh, rather than rushing through, which is often the temptation to say, I'm going to read the whole uh, book of Isaiah in one sitting, well, that may not be as productive as reading two lines of it and, and meditating on that. The ministry of the word to pastoral preaching, catechetics, and all forms of Christian instruction, among which the liturgical homily, homily should show it's whole pride of place of preaching at mass when the uh, and at the offices is healthily nourished and thrives in holiness through the word of scripture. Again, De Verbum 24. 113. The church forcefully and specifically exhorts all the Christian faithful to learn the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ by frequent reading of the divine scriptures, 
Ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ, St. Jerome. See Philippians 3.8 and St. Jerome's commentary on Isaiah. Uh, book 18. Patrologia Latina, that's the Latin collection of, of uh, of the fathers of the Latin church and others in the Latin church, the early church before 800 or so, usually. Sometimes they extend all the way to St. Bernard of Clairvaux in the, the 12th century. And many Easterners say, well, we're still in the Patristic age. That, that should be the uh, the 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 focus there of of our scriptural commentaries and things like that and developing on the uh, what uh, the, the fathers of the church their uh, insights in scripture uh, their uh, as someone once said unleashing of the apostolic tradition one thirty three the church forcefully and specifically exhorts all and faithful to learn the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ by frequently reading the divine scriptures. Ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. So it's not reading scriptures in isolation from, you know, uh, again, I was talking about, you know, meditating on one passage, uh, that, you know, it, uh, with, uh, but not, not in isolation from scripture. Not quote unquote cherry picking, as they say. And certainly not in isolation from the apostolic tradition that in which scripture makes sense, in which you, uh, in which you can only have an orthodox interpretation if it's in accord with the apostolic tradition. You know, the, you, know when you read the, uh, meet the Trinity in Holy Scripture, uh, you, you uh, profess Jesus Christ as true God and true man, that's reading scripture in apostolic tradition. And then with the church, through and through the church, because the church is the interpreter of scripture, uh, we can get, you know, personal insights and things like the scripture, but it's not, you know, to be proclaimed from the housetops, but, uh, but the, the church does. The church is the one authorized to do that and uh, 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 proclaiming the authentic Proclamation of apostolic tradition. Does this mean all churchmen, even the highest churchmen, they're always they're always right and shouldn't be challenged? You say, well, this doesn't seem to be in accord with apostolic tradition. What you're saying doesn't seem to be in accord with the, with the catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, or uh, or, 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 or apostolic morality, the morality of the New Testament, even the written the written New Testament, the passages that. No, we have that duty to uh, do that, but uh, of course it's supposed to be, uh, the leaders of the church are supposed to be exhorting us and directing us, but that history shows us that's not always the direction the Holy Spirit goes in. You know, if they, they're ignoring the Holy Spirit or they're defying the Holy Spirit or whatever, if they're not uh, living the way they're supposed to, uh, to be examples to uh, to everybody, because we see that in the, the corruptions, the political and uh, economic corruption, shall we say, the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, all that. So, and uh, you know, bishops living in palaces, blah 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 blah, uh, or, or ignoring what they're supposed to do, or worse, living the complete opposite, or sadly teaching things contrary to the teach. So, we have to exercise our prophetic ministry, but we have to know what we're doing. And not act, uh, act in in just uh, spitefulness, which some people do, or uh, in our own ignorance. You know, we may think we're right and all this stuff, but maybe we're not in accord with apostolic tradition. So we have to we have to become ever more learned, ever more grounded in the what uh, scripture and tradition in the church. Because if you're separated from the apostolic tradition, your interpretation is going to be off. 
and often self-centered. So, and again, this is not, you know, traditions with the small t, necessarily. Oh, and it's certainly not the traditions of men that Jesus was criticizing, which are in contradiction to the apostolic tradition. All, this is 134. All sacred scripture is but one book. Actually, it's made up of many books, but that's, it's one book. It's all to be taken together. The Old Testament, New Testament. All the different books, all the different emphases of the different books, all taken together. And again, taken together in Mosaic slash apostolic tradition and in the church, in the authoritative church together. Because all divine scripture speaks of Christ, and all divine scripture is fulfilled in Christ. A quotation from Hugh of St. Victor on the Ark of Noah 2, 8, <coughs> Patrologia Latina 176. 135. The sacred scripture contain the word of God. So they, they contain the word of God. And because they are inspired, they are truly the word of God. De Verbum 24. God is the author of sacred scripture because he inspired its human authors. He acts in them and by means of them. He thus gives assurance that their writings teach without error that his saving truth. De Verbum 11. Interpretation of the inspired scripture must be attentive above all to what God wants to reveal through the sacred authors, for our salvation. So it's not, not trying to find, you know, uh, the Big Bang in it, or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, to use it to affirm uh, my geological theories or biological theories or something like that. No, it's for our salvation. The, uh, many people approach scripture as literature which... It's fine, but it's not salvific. You, you approach scripture for our salvation. You approach scripture looking for God, trusting in God, living in God. God is the author of sacred scripture because he inspired its human authors. He acts in them and by means of them. So this isn't uh, automatic writing or something or... or dictation from above this it's it's inspiration through the all the human uh <clears throat> the human intellect through the human emotions through uh the culture uh, the cultural expressions and all this stuff that uh, god chose that and inspired them he thus gives assurance that their writings teach without error his saving truth again it's not about that uh about errors, about, you know, uh, astronomy, let's say, or uh, paleogeology, or uh, even anthropology, or even uh, history in the, in the, the strict modern uh, newspaper reporting thing. Of course, newspapers now are, are just editorializing and, and uh, expressions of political and social biases so often and not trying to get you know, obje ab utterly objective reporting no so but uh, no scripture we come to scripture to find the lord we come to scripture to let the lord speak to us and to draw us to a, a deeper conversion and, and sanctification and uh, illumination a moral illumination spiritual illumination So they teach without ever the saving truth. So it's the saving truth. It's Jesus Christ coming through. The Holy Spirit coming through. God the Father as our Father coming through. So that's De Verbum 11. Interpretation of the inspired scripture must be attentive above all to what God wants to reveal to the sacred authors for our salvation. What comes from the Spirit, quote, is not fully understood except by the Spirit's action. Origin, homilies on Exodus. 
4, 5, Patrologia Greca, that's the Greek collection of the fathers, 12, 320. So, uh, you're, it's ultimately arrogance if I think, well, I'll just, you know, I'll, I, have, I have the Bible, and it's going to be totally clear to me, and I don't need anyone to help me with it. I don't need the church, I don't need prayer, I don't need all any of this stuff to get through. I'm just going to get it, and I, in fact, I'm going to come up with insights that nobody ever, ever had o- over uh, these 2,000 years. So, uh, that's hubris. But anyway, not that they can, it could be uh, individual insights that are for you and not for anybody else. Or very things that could be, yeah, uh, you'll be interpreting through on the different senses, the different levels, uh, you know, the spir- different spiritual levels as well as the literal levels. So. The church, and ex- this is 138, and this is page 38. The church accepts and venerates as inspired the 46 books of the Old Testament, 46, that's the, the, the Deuterocanonicals as well as the Protocanonicals. The, uh, it's the full, not, not the truncated uh, Pharisee canon, uh, let alone the truncated Sadducee, which is only the first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch. And the 27 books of the New. So, uh, where, uh, I don't know of any Christians that dispute the 27. Book. Now, they may, they were those who try to go to have a canon within a canon and sort of kick to the side books they don't like or things that are uh, particularly challenging to their, the, their particular uh, social, uh, uh, often socio political uh, Emphasis, shall we say? So they'll say, "Well, uh, we, uh, you know, we'll sort of put this over on the side because we don't like the, we don't like the Epistle of James because it 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 contradicts uh, the teaching of uh, Church A or B or C uh, that it's salvation by faith alone or something like that." So, so we'll just push James over the side, and uh, and. Uh, when we do bring it up, it'll be according to our interpretation of our, our particular church tradition, which uh, may be heavily indebted to apostolic tradition, but uh, often the particulars of that tradition are 500 years old at the most, or uh, 200, 100, 50 years, 10 years old, and all that. So, uh, uh, Anyway, but the 27, they all accept the 27 books, the, the Catholic, Catholic slash Orthodox canon of the New Testament, you know, which was, you know, uh, defined by, you know, uh, uh, Pope Damasus, the uh, synods of Hippo and Carthage and others in, in the fourth century, mind you, in the, even the late fourth century, going up into the late fourth century, fifth century even. And and, uh, and the canon usually was not an issue in the uh, early church of the medieval church. Uh, uh, the canon of the Old Testament, that is. The canon of the New would be because there were all sorts of Gnostic false gospels being presented and other false gospels being presented, some of which were very, you know, even edifying, but uh, not. So uh, the New Testament had to be defined early on. In the Old Testament, because there was still this controversy among the non-Christian Jews, uh, uh, that, but for the most part, the Christian Jews and then the Gentile Christians accepted the Septuagint canon. But of course, there were different variants of the Septuagint canon. Do you have the Vulgate, which is what the Catholic Church accepted, or, or, do, you know, or do you put uh, your third and fourth Esdras, uh, 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 third and fourth Maccabees, as some of the Orthodox do, or even as the Ethiopian do, the Book of Enoch, uh, or and others. So the, uh, but again, you know, it's Catholic, Catholic Christians. We say Scripture and tradition in the Church, and the Church is the Catholic Church, the authoritative Church. Of course, the other churches share it, and I do call them churches. And yes, I know that uh, unless they have apostolic tradition, 
the canonical phrase is ecclesial uh, community. Um, uh, but they, you know, they, but they have uh, strong elements of the of church. So yeah, they don't have apostolic succession. They don't have uh, very other uh, traditional legitimacies. But if they're teaching the Trinity and the like, and especially if they're teaching a fullness, but it would of course it won't be a, a full fullness, quote unquote, unless they're Catholic from our from our Catholic view. Uh, so uh, we have much more in common with small o Orthodox Christians of any type uh, in the era of doctrine than, uh, the, uh, than we don't. An issue now is the capitulation to the uh, morality or better called immorality often of, of uh, the uh, elite of the Western culture, stuff like that. You're, accepting even applauding abortion and uh, which is fetal stage homicide oh uh, sex uh, sex outside of marriage all this stuff you know, and of course the whole thing gay marriage and all this other stuff which is not in in accord with apostolic tradition but of course we must exercise this in charity we have to teach the morality and charity and compassion, not false compassion, not enabling, but authentic compassion as, as Christians, and uh, loyal to the, the fullness of it, rather than to fall into unnecessary harshness. Uh, nor should we water down things to, to go along to get along. So we have to be faithful to the fullness of the moral teaching of the natural law uh, of the faith as handed down by the, uh, by the, the saints and uh, in the church. So, but uh, charity, faith, hope, and love, treating all in charity, do to others as you would have them do to you. So, the church accepts and venerates as inspired the 46 books of the Old Testament and the 27 books of the New. 139, the four Gospels occupy a central place because Jesus Christ is their center. The unity of the two Testaments proceeds from the unity of God's plan and his revelation. The Old Testament prepares for the New, and the New Testament fulfills the Old. The two shed light on each other. <coughs> Both are true word of God. The Church has always venerated the divine scriptures, as she venerated the body of the Lord, Dei Verbum 21, both nourish and govern the whole Christian life. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105, see Isaiah 54. So, we're hold, called to hold strong to Scripture, Scripture rightly interpreted, and and uh, or the whole tradition, rather than to be uh, cowed in fear by uh, the pressures of society, the powers in society, and the powers of society have always wanted to control everything. They, they may have different things, and they want their uh, their ways to be applauded, not to be criticized, but. The prophetic way is uh, is a general critique, and of course we have to begin with ourselves. We have to begin with, uh, examining ourselves and see: Am I, as an individual, am I as a subgroup, am I as a member of this or that? The other, am I uh, striving to live the fullness of the deposit of faith, to live the fullness of of the gospel? Am I truly striving by grace, because it's only by grace that this could be done, to live uh, loving God with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and my neighbor as myself, and progressing in that, since it's always a pilgrimage in this life, and uh, love my neighbor as myself, which means I have to love myself too, with this agape love, not uh, self-serving and often self-destructive selfishness, which uh, sort of disguises this love. Uh, and it's not. 
Well, let's pray the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.